I'm rebuilding my home network with a proper rack and a dedicated UPS instead of running Raspberry Pis scattered all over my office. Well, here's my 3D printed rack mount solution for the Pis, holding some of them already. There are links to all the parts and gear I'm using in this video in the description below. Now, before I put together this 3D printed rack, I considered buying this 1U rack mount plate for 40 bucks on Amazon. It looks nice, but it only holds four pies. And besides, why would I spend money on this if I have a 3D printer already? I can build anything, right? Ignoring the fact that it takes over 20 hours to print and half a spool of filament, I was happy to find this cool 1U pie rack mount enclosure by Russ Ross on Thingiverse. He even posted videos about how to make it, and he has this 1U version for six pies and a 2U version for 12 pies. The coolest part was these little sliding trays that allow hot swap without having to remove the whole rack enclosure like you'd have to do with the pre-made one that I saw on Amazon. From his video, it looked really nice and simple, but as I've learned with all my 3D printing, what at first seems easy could take days with many failed prints. So I started off by printing one rack frame with the default settings. Kira didn't build any supports and that didn't turn out so well. Apparently it's a little tougher to build 0.2 millimeter bridges over a 10 centimeter gap than I thought. So I tried turning the print over on another side and I stopped that print when I realized it was gonna try to bridge the gap again in a different place. So I added supports everywhere. The next print went a little better but the print wound up curling up on the edges. I have a lot to learn about 3D printing. A few DuckDuckGo searches later, I realized that I needed to re-level my bed again and add a brim. And so I did that and look, it actually worked. So now just five more frames to print. That'll take two days. Well, I might as well get started on the trays too, since those are kind of important to actually hold the pies in the rack. I printed one with default settings and it actually turned out great on the first try. But then I realized that I didn't have the required 12 millimeter M2.5 screws to mount the pies, so off to Amazon to order a bag of them. Once they arrived, mounting the pies to the standoffs was super easy. Finally, I printed the two ears, and they were thankfully easy to get right on the first try. So next I had to assemble the frames and the ears together. I ran to Lowe's, grabbed three foot of number 10 threaded rod and some nuts. I handed the rod over to Redshirt Jeff, and he made a nice show of sparks while he cut it with a Dremel tool into two equal lengths. Then I got them back and assembled everything on my desk. To my surprise, everything fit together precisely. Just don't over tighten the nuts or you'll start cracking the plastic. I mounted the enclosure in the rack and slid in a couple pies. There's enough surface on the front of each tray to put a nice little label on the pie that it's holding, and I think that's a pretty nice touch. It's easiest to power these pies through Ethernet since USB-C port access is a little bit tough with these frames. So I installed a PoE hat on each pie and I'm using an Aruba PoE switch, one that's actually really full featured and totally overkill for my needs right now. But I'll be diving more into PoE and this switch in particular in a future video, so subscribe. Since I'm also running critical parts of my home network on these pies, I wanted to make sure they stay up even through the brief power outages we get here in the Midwest. So I have the PoE switch plugged into the APC UPS, which is complete overkill for my current setup. But if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that overkill is kind of the theme here. Getting this UPS into the rack is a story in itself. Basically, if you're gonna get a supercharged UPS like this one for free like I did, maybe you should check the dimensions for the rails before you buy your rack and make sure your rack will fit the UPS without major modifications. In my case, I had to drill out some holes, chamfer the ends, and cut some square tube to extend the back. And the way I have it mounted means I can't use the UPS's own mounting hardware either, so it's kind of just sitting here on the rails. I mean, the thing's over 100 pounds, so it's not like it's gonna slide out if I just touch it. And you might notice there's also a 10 gig switch up on top of the rack. And I'm wiring everything in this rack with either CAT 6A or CAT 7 cabling. And you might be wondering, why does that matter for a bunch of Raspberry Pis? Well, spoiler alert, I also have 2.5 and 10 gig network cards working on the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4, so check out my existing videos on 2.5 gig networking on the Pi, and subscribe so you can see my future video on 10 gig networking on the Pi. And I've shown you the rack, but what do these Pis actually do? Well, the first one here is my internet monitoring Pi, and it also runs Pi-hole and DNS services for the house. It helps me keep my ISP honest, and if you ask nicely in the comments, I might even talk about the open source Ansible playbook that I use to set it up. The second Pi is actually serving the Raspberry Pi Dramble website, 
pydramble.com. But I'm gonna move it back to my Kubernetes Pi cluster soon after I migrate that cluster into this rack. There will be more on that later too. And finally, this little Pi at the end is monitoring my Starlink internet on a separate network through a separate dedicated PoE switch. For those who've been asking, I'll have a full review of Starlink coming really soon. So there it is, six Pis in a rack. Well, three right now, the other three are almost ready to move. Thanks to Russ Ross for designing the rack, and if you're wondering what other things I'm gonna be doing in this rack, well, subscribe. Until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling. Even through brief power outages, I don't know why I sung the word brief there, but oh, there's a fire. Can you hear it? This is the disadvantage of not being in my office. You hear everything that happens outside. And you can hear my 3D printer back there, probably. 10 gig networking on the PC. Dang, not a PC. Six pies. Ah, sorry about that. Hopefully I didn't drop a few packets there. My legs are killing me.